Hi, I'm Liz Kettle. And I'm Ruth Chandler. And we're co-authors of the book Fabric Embellishing Basics and Beyond. And today we're going to be talking about this technique called Devore. It's a chemical process where you remove parts of the fibers in your, your work. And it works, on, we use this product called Fiber Edge, and it works on cellulose-based fabrics. It works on cotton, linen, rayon. It does not work on silk or wool, so that's an important fact. And if you leave it on too long, you end up with holes. So <laughs> we'll, we'll walk you through that so you don't go there. In the book, we just focused on cut work. And I've got a quick little demo for you today to show you how to do a piece of cut work. And I just did this one so you could already see it. This one I did earlier, but I want to show you how you put on the fiber edge. Well, first of all, what kind of thread did you use? That's very important. Oh, thank you. Polyester thread because it does not react to the right. polyester thread. And in the book, we used a sat heavy satin stitch, but we wanted to see if we could just use a straight stitch. And you do have to go around it like four to five times at least to make sure. And then it's still a little iffy. This is definitely a, pro a process that's gonna take you some trial and error to The thread to get. is basically a resist. Yes, the thread so is a resist. So it stops the yeah. process. So the fiber edge comes with this little pointy nozzle. You just clip off the tiniest little bit, and you're just going to go right on your fabric, fairly close to the edge, and not, you don't have to go all the way up. And you don't have to go into the middle, you're just going right on the edge. And here I'm just using the tip to spread it, not to put more on. And then you wanna let this dry. You can use a um, hair dryer or heat gun to dry it a little bit, but you wanna be careful, have it on low heat. You don't wanna overdo it. It really does better if you let it air dry. Just air dry. I know we're always in a hurry, however, the air dry does does end do up with a better product. So then when it's dry, it looks like this. It kind of turns a little bit yellow and you want to just iron it for a few minutes and then it will turn black. This is the one I did earlier. It's not the one I just did. It's, so it's, um, it's already mostly dry. There is a fine line on how yeah. black you want it. Um, if you do it too long, it will burn through. Burn through. Well, and this you want it to burn through, this you, however, right. you don't want your threads to start burning. Right. So you can see here where it's black. I can just pull this away. It's kind of like magical. Comes out really, really simply. Now, then after you get most of the big chunks out, you'll want to go ahead and rinse it and it will get all the little pieces out. Um, you may want a, like a soft bristle toothbrush. Sometimes that helps to get some of the little pieces out. Um, now you might ask, then you put it, you know, this is kind of a reverse applique technique. And you can see this one came out really nicely, nice and clean. And this one's, I just need to rinse these away. Um, when, if you're doing simple reverse applique, we're not in love with this technique for this. Uh, it's a chemical process, it's, you know, that's non-toxic, but, you know, it's just one more yucky thing that you're breathing in, and it's another expense. We just would rather use our Hubble scissors and Or these teeny tiny the... little guys, and these can get really nice sharp points. Yeah. So, for this technique, yeah, we're not also that thrilled with it. Where we think it really shines is when you want to do something like this. This is a Devore scarf and it's a commercial scarf it given to me by a friend this does have a, an awful lot of negative space so I think you would have to use a, a lot of this fiber etch so I'm not sure unless you wanted to use little sections to cut to put in a specific piece or to make a scarf like this I think it would probably take several bottles so I don't I don't know I mean it's not something that I would do but it sure is beautiful and I love wearing this Another piece we have is another commercial product, and this is silk, and this is yardage, and it's just a beautiful piece. Um, I think if you were going to do small sections of it, it would work, but it is kind of difficult to find the fabric. Yeah, the fabric, um, you need a special fabric. It has to be a cellulose and um, animal fiber woven together. 
if it's just a silk and cotton blend fabric, you're not guaranteed that the warp and weft is the same base. Like the silk on the um, on these the... velvets that we were using, the warp and weft fabric behind it is silk. And the tufting on top is rayon, so we're able to eat away the rayon fabric and leave the silk base. So you have, if um, like that radiance fabric that yes. we love, it doesn't work because it's not, the warp is cotton and the weft is uh, silk or vice versa. So we did but, a leaf, and what happened was we got little strings <laughs> in the middle of the leaf. There was not much fabric left. It so was kind of sad. It just looked like it had been buried yeah. for a few years. Yeah. So it didn't but, end up So like you do body. have to get special fabrics. The <clears throat> um, main place we found them is uh, Dharma Trading. They have them. They have this. This And the fabrics come white though and you have to dye them. So it's another step. But if you really want a special p element for a garment or something. This and is what really is it fun. called on Dharma's website? Devore Rayon. Yeah. Velvet. It all, it's, they have Devore, flat Devore, they have all different kinds of Devore fabrics, the, the satin and the velvet and lots of different ones. And pretty much that's the only place we've really found it. Yeah. That, and, and then you do have to really go through the pages and look for what you're yeah. trying to find. So it, it becomes a little bit more difficult to find. We had so, a lot of fun with the stamps though. You want to yes, show them the stamps? the stamps. This stamp here, and I don't know if you can see it really well, we will get some still shots is from this really wonderful stamp, the wooden hand card stamps we get from India, and there'll be um, an address for you to go to to find these. Um, what we did was we took the a sponge, and just, and the Devore is clear, and it's kind of difficult to see, so that's another thing. With paint, you can see the paint, so that's easier to see, but um, on this stamp, it's sort of like a snowflake, and you just stamp it on with these, and we buy cosmetic sponges, or I think this might this be kitchen for, sponges even, art sponges. Um, I think this was for waxing a car, yeah. but anyway. So you, and we did want to get all the little details. You want to, you need to put a lot on. It needs it to be pretty saturated. It does take quite a bit. And you want to work on the back. We're going to put the plush side of the fabric down. And you also want something soft to give yourself a little bit of give there. And I don't know, we just pushed it down yeah, pretty just hard for just a couple hard. minutes or seconds, I guess. And then you probably can't see this, but you, you, can you see that very well? Um, it, it's just kind of a little bit darker line. What we'll do is let this dry and then we'll heat it and then wash it out and all the extra fibers will come and out. And this is the other one and I'm just going to put it here. Once again, it's these this, two. These two. This is this. And we found that the one. ones that didn't have as much detail, the real detailed stamps just didn't work. There was just too much there. Yeah. So it didn't do a good one. Okay. The other thing I had a lot of fun with was just using a brush. I used one of these really inexpensive chip brushes and I just made marks. It was fun, it was fast and easy, and I think this would be my favorite way of of do, using this, just to make some really bold graphic designs. And you could do a scarf, sure, like this, really fast with um, some generic. And we had another sample where we were just doing kind of blobs that turned out really, really fun with just little. Yeah, we used like spaces. one of those really inexpensive sponge brushes you can get at the paint in the paint section. Okay. This one was fun. Now this one that I did, and these are stencils from Art Cellar, and they've got some new ones out, and I really liked it. And we did it on here and once again there is a little bit of kind of a learning curve with this product. How much to put down. And, and you can see I didn't get enough in places but it, it turned out good and I'm gonna use it um, but this was done with a stencil. When you're using a stencil you want to use one of these spray adhesives to the temporary adhesive you spray it on the back of your stencil and then wait five minutes and then put it down so that the um, the liquid is not bleeding, bleeding underneath. Yeah. And then I did it one with this more um, detailed stencil, and it did not work very well. Uh, I think it's, there's, that's part of that learning curve. A really simple design is going to work well at first. This one, I lost a lot of the details, and then there's sections where I didn't have quite enough. 
this was not my first attempt. So I had done a couple attempts. But with this deep, fine detail, it was really difficult to pick up all the details. But I think if you really like this look, it's, it's something you could probably master pretty quickly. We just spent like four or five hours on it yesterday. I think it kind of looks like tattered lace. And once again, yeah. there's a fine line between not enough and too much so that's one of those things that I think you're just gonna have to play with yeah. get your hand to it just right and if you're going to do that I would recommend using the exact same sponges every single time so that's you kind of get a, mm, that's good a feel for it yeah. now this piece was turning out really well except we kind of forgot about it so we are we, too busy doing other things. We started doing something else. So we have too much fun when we <laughs> get together. So uh, <laughs> we left the fiber etch on too long, and then um, Ruth was uh, ironing it. And I'm always was, in a hurry. She was t actually you were not in a hurry. She over ironed it. Yeah. So we have holes, which is actually not a bad look if you want holes in your piece. That could be a fun way to do but it. But this look here is pretty good. And this was also with a stencil. And, but with this one, I laid the stencil on top, and I just used the tip of the bottle to fill in the little circles because it was a lot less um, detailed. Um, and it so was only part something. of the stencil. Yeah, also. I might do something like this again. Yeah. I, it, the holes are kind of irregular, but I like that. So, so I think it's a, a fun product. It's got some potential. And even though Ruth and I aren't all that excited about using it in our work, we may change our mind in a couple years when we have a project that we go, oh, Oh, I know exactly what how to do this. And I so, think using thinking yardage is very overwhelming. Yeah, if you're thinking you don't want small pieces, I think that would be good. Something like this, go no way. It. I'm gonna go buy it. Yeah, just go <laughs> buy it. So uh, have fun, play with the Devore, and um, at least give it a try. I yeah. think it's kind of cool product. So. And if you end up like loving it, then we want to see photos. Yeah, we want to see photos <laughs> of what you do, and tell us your tips and tricks. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs>